Okay, so it's a great pleasure to introduce this uh, session on the patient's voice uh, for people with adrenal insufficiency. So the, um, the emphasis here is uh, about our patient support organisations uh, and patient advocacy charities. And uh, these organisations obviously deal directly with our patients uh, without interacting with the doctors, but they can also provide a lot of resources and good information for clinicians working in these areas, particularly uh, in the uh, rarer conditions where uh, not all clinicians have loads of experience or lots of resources to help them manage these patients. Uh, so we're going to hear from um, uh, four patient support organisations based in the UK and uh, we bookended on uh, at the back end uh, with uh, Dr. Helen Simpson, a consultant endocrinologist from UCLH in London. Uh, but we'll start off with Vic Smith from the Addison's Disease Health Help Group. Um, do you want to give us a wave, Vic? No? Yeah? Hey. Uh, followed by uh, Karen, Karen Harrison from uh, Alex TLC, which is a support organisation for uh, patients with adrenal leukodystrophy and adrenal myeloneuropathy. Uh, followed by uh, Kaz Williams from the Congenital Adrenal Hypoplasia Society living with CAH uh, and uh, lastly from Miranda Payne who uh, is uh, working with the Pituitary Foundation uh, which obviously has a broader remit than just adrenal insufficiency but still lots of uh, great uh, resources in the UK and a really large uh, charity and then we'll go back to Helen for a roundup of everything. Uh, so uh, we've got quite tight timelines, so I'm going to move s swiftly on uh, to Vic. So over to you, Vic. Hello, everybody. Um, one of the things that we wanted to highlight before we dived into each of the individual um, support organisations was to let you know about things that we all share. So uh, where clinic time is limited, we can bridge the clinic gap through easing the loneliness and fear of a rare disease diagnosis. We can increase understanding of confidence and quality of life through education. We can reduce hospital admission through adrenal crisis prevention education. And we can supply adrenal insufficiency crisis emergency kit components and other essentials. And we can keep uh, adrenal insufficiency patients updated with COVID and vaccine related developments and also update you as medics via conferences and our digital channels. So moving on to um, the Addison's Disease Self-Help Group specifically, um, so I'm really pleased to be working um, for this group um, at the moment and um, we're, we provide quite a re really good range of resources that you can use to support your patients and they can use themselves as well between clinics. The first one I want to highlight to you is the sanctuary of support. So there are times when patients feel lost, concerned, puzzled or poorly, and that can happen to newly diagnosed patients or those who've just hit a bit of a bump in the road or have become unstable with their adrenal insufficiency. So we've put together our top resources uh, for those situations to just try and give that support when people are feeling really, really lost. We've also got an online forum. So for 24 hours a day, really, people can go on there and get support from other people who've got lived experience of adrenal insufficiency. And sometimes it can just be for some support and encouragement and sometimes it's so that you can find out other people's experiences so it really is a really useful tool for people when they can't get that appointment necessarily at that critical moment we've also got um, our wonderful book um, put together by professor pierce and sarah spain which um, is great for people who are newly diagnosed but also for those more experienced with adrenal insufficiency everybody seems to learn something new from from this guide it's got a bit of everything in there to really get you started and we also um, the emergency injection is something really important um, for patients uh, when, especially when we're starting to get out and about more as well um, to keep safe in case we have an adrenal crisis so we provide um, kits through our shop. We've got leaflets, but we've also got training videos. So if you are giving kits to patients, you can put them in the direction of these resources um, so that they know how to use them. 
Uh, we've also been keeping track of the COVID and vaccine situation with the support of the learning societies. And we've got some lived experience from our members as well that your patients can look at if they're feeling unsure. And also you can take a look at those to see how the different vaccines are being received by our community. We've just started our children and young adults hub as well, because there's a real difference in the sort of needs that they have in their care and the sort of information and the way it's delivered so that they feel they can relate to it. So we've got that dedicated online resource centre. We also offer research grants and recently have um, issued some grants to some really exciting projects, um, including those that will support diagnosis and making emergency injections easier. Um, but we can help you too if you are researching in this area. So do take a look at our research offerings. We've also got online advice for medics. We've got our 10 steps to marvellous care. So take a look at those and compare your approach to that and see if there's any extras you can add for those extra finishing touches that can really help your patients feel confident and self-manage. And you can find all these resources through the QR code or the link to our Endo Hub, where all of this is brought together for you so you can find it easily. I'd now uh, like to hand over to Karen at Alex TLC to talk through the sorts of offerings that she's able to give through her organisation. Thank you, Vic. Good morning, everyone. Here at Alex TLC, we support males of all ages who have adrenal insufficiency, which has been caused by their diagnosis of adrenal dystrophy or adrenal myelinopathy. Obviously, living with two rare diseases can be really tricky with a myriad of professionals and people involved with their care. So we also support the wider family as well, because families can feel very overwhelmed having good diagnosis. Now, the way we do this is we offer one-to-one -one support. Often this is by email to begin with and then by phone. Pre-COVID, we used to do quite a lot of home visits, which was especially useful. Um, obviously, we haven't been able to do that, so we've been making really good use of Zoom, and I think that that will also continue even once we sort of starting to open up. So that's that's been really really good. Now, at the start of the pandemic, we emailed and phoned all of our members who have adrenal insufficiency um, just to check that they had their emergency kits, ask them to check the dates on them. Um, and also that they felt confident with the sick day rules and that they had good supply of hydrocortisone. We also referred them to the Addison's Disease Self-Help Group because they have so much good information, so we work very closely with them. The other way that we can help the families and the clinicians is by support at hospital consultations. As I mentioned previously, there are so many professionals involved when you have more than one rare disease. So it's really helpful to have someone there just to lean on and to help ask questions, take notes, um, and also you have a good knowledge of both conditions. So it's very important to have us there. We also advocate and raise awareness. We advocate for the best possible treatment and outcome for our families. And we raise awareness both publicly and with the medical profession. And we provide reliable information which is easy to understand and has been fact checked by our medical specialists. The difficulty faced by our families is that ALD is their primary diagnosis, and often their adrenal insufficiency becomes secondary to that diagnosis. Of course, in everyday life, the adrenal insufficiency causes them more issues than ALD often. And this can be especially so if they arrive when they're unwell in A&E. And so the recent new steroid card has been a real fantastic piece of information with all the information on it that gives to clinicians when they arrive. And we've publicised widely with our community about the new steroid card and how they can obtain it. So please always remember that if you have a male patient of any age who has no obvious cause for their adrenal insufficiency to check that it might just be adrenal, adrenal dystrophy which is causing it. I will now hand you over to Kaz from the Living with CAH. And thank you. Good morning. Yeah, thank you very much. Really, really great to hear all the different things we're doing. So I'm Kaz. I'm the Adult Support Coordinator of UK-based Living with CAH. As you can see from this slide, we offer a whole range of services. And I think I just wanted to focus on 
the awareness raising in particular across for better services across all the healthcare professionals um, like the other organizations we offer grants for relevant research we offer considerable direct support and a lot of collaboration with other groups as today but including those groups that offer support and guidance to families and people um, with variations of sex characteristics because this is another aspect of ch this work is really needed. We find families and people with CH often feel very alone, very isolated. They don't know where to turn. It's a complex rare disease and we can provide that peer support, someone to talk to and, and most of all, the lived experience. As in our charity, we have both patients and adults with CH on our trustee board. Families really appreciate the support and it's about working with the health services to fill those gaps. And like the other services that have been just been discussed, we can do that specialist advocacy as well. So much of progress has been made and, and that's amazing, including the NHS card, um, the steroid card, which, which has just been mentioned, which I personally used recently going into a &E, and it was fantastic. So thank you for that. Some of the areas we'd like to focus on in the future is really developing that person-centred approach because that seems to produce the best outcomes um, for, for all our people and our families and working closely with establishments to get that. Um, we'd like a greater focus on adolescents and the transition to adult health care because this, if, if, if we lose our people at that point, their long-term trajectory in terms of positive healthcare outcomes is going to be greatly impacted. We feel there should be more psychological um, support and understanding of the awareness um, of, the, of the impact of CH and look at research in that area as well. Also really focus on um, having that multidisciplinary team available um, to a family um, when a girl is born with CH so they have the opportunity to look at outcomes and choices and, and discuss that with the family before any, anything, any decisions are made. And really important working closely with patient support groups like these ones today and others and, and really bringing the um, peer support because we all find that invaluable and that could be a really key part of that, that healthcare plan. So finally, I just want to say really, I mean, I, the, the collaboration that between um, the medical establishment and patient support groups means that you know, people with CH not only survive, but we can go on to thrive in the future. So thank you very much and, and look forward to working with you. I'd like now to pass over to uh, Miranda from the Paturity Foundation. Thank you. Thanks, Kirst. Morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Miranda from the Pituitary Foundation. Um, so we provide support to patients with pituitary conditions across the UK and Republic of Ireland. Um, that, of course, includes adrenal insufficiency, but also acromegaly, Cushing's, diabetes insipidus, prolactinoma and more. Um, we provide a range of services to support these patients um, and they're all available for free. So we have phone, email and text helplines um, to give a listening ear and to provide signposting to useful resources for our patients. Um, we also have an endocrine nurse helpline, which is for more sort of specific medical queries, which people find really valuable and is very busy. Uh, we have a library of publications on a variety of topics, so from surgery to specific conditions um, and lifestyle booklets, which all kind of empower patients and help them to understand their condition really well. Uh, we have peer support services. So we have telephone buddies and local support groups to allow patient, patients to um, meet other patients in a similar situation to them, which really reduces the isolation of having a rare disease. We also work to raise awareness of pituitary conditions, and that's both in the general public and within health professionals um, in order to increase, di like improve diagnosis. And we normally hold patient conferences every 18 months as well. Although, of course, we've just gone virtual for our most recent one, which was really good um, and gives, again, people an opportunity to hear from medical professionals and to meet other patients in a similar situation. Um, we also work with medical professionals to kind of help you 
to help our patients. Um, so we have referral pads, which are a really easy way for you to refer your patients to our services. Um, and we also, you can order our booklets to hand out to your patients. And we provide um, a tailored email bulletin four times a year, specifically for endocrine professionals, um, for you to hear the most relevant updates from us. Um, and all of that can be found on our virtual booth or via the QR code on the slide. Um, I'll hand you over to Dr. Helen Simpson now. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. So I'm just giving a little bit of a clinician's perspective. Um, and I should have said on my slide, I'm a trustee for the Addison's Disease Self-Help Group um, with um, Simon Pierce as well, we, we work really hard to try and help give medical information, especially in these times of crisis. So all the information can be shared and integrated really well. And next slide, please. I'm feeling very Chris Whitty. So I also do a lot of stuff for the Society for Endocrinology. And one of the things that's really important is we work with all our patient support groups. I'm very proud of this stick person just demonstrating the groups that we work with. Next slide, please. This last sort of year and a half has been like no other and we've all of us had to think about how we deliver our care, how we communicate. Many of us have been repurposed, not doing our normal day job. This is me as a nurse assistant writing my ITU nursing notes, which was in the second wave that hit London really hard. And so I haven't been there available for my patients as I might have been normally. And this is, I think, also caused a lot of anxiety for our patients. And this is where patient support groups have really been able to bridge the gap. Next slide, please. The way we deliver our care also has really dra drastically changed in the last 18 months and we won't be going back to the same old face-to-face -face for every consultation. We've been using telephone, video, digital, we have patient, a patient portal. Um, next slide please. Oh, there's one missing, let's go back. Oh sorry, this one that's dropped off. Um, I think someone's deleted a slide. So there's another slide that says that actually, if you think about it, the amount of time that patients are with us for in a year is, let's say, 40 minutes max over a year. And that's 0.008% of the time. And patients are living with their condition day in, day out with their families. And so really, as doctors and healthcare physicians, we actually don't provide that much practical support day to day. The thing that our patients with adrenal insufficiency are most fearful is adrenal crisis, especially you can imagine during the pandemic. And we know that infections are the biggest cause of uh, a crisis, especially GI infections, but flu and non-flu infections, as you can see here. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. We'll skip over that. So just to show a little bit more about the reach from these organisations. So if you think about it, we all use social media, some more than others. And um, Addison's Disease Health Out Group has 16,000 hits a month on different social media platforms. And their website has a 328,000 hits, which is phenomenal. I can never provide 328,000 pieces of advice to my patients, even if I'm, you know, the best will in the world. So this delivers information that I just cannot do as a healthcare professional. The other support groups are similar. And the Petrucci Foundation has 20,000 followers across different platforms as well on social media. Next, please. So the things on the website that would be really useful and really important, as, as Vic has mentioned, is how to do an emergency injection. And if we get time in the in the Q&A, we can actually talk about how this has really helped Brazil, for example, in keeping their patients safe with adrenal insufficiency. So the reach is huge. Patients can buy what they might need to give an emergency injection. And we all know when patients haven't had their face-to-face -face appointments, they've really struggled to get some of the practical things. Okay. Keeping information updated. So there's been loads of questions about COVID vaccines and we've, the medical team together with the support group have kept the pages updated. So it's a good quick place of, of information. Again, we can't work that speedy in our organizations to update our web pages. Next slide, please. The Q&A, um, so at the um, AGM last year, we've got it again this year. And again, Q&As by Zoom actually is really inclusive in a way it wasn't maybe with face-to-face. So we had a live Q&A and I think about three medics answering questions on the chat and face to face. So we shared a lot of information, but also for me, it was a really valuable opportunity to hear people's real life experiences and what was really mattering on the ground to patients. Next slide, please. Okay. Another amazing bit of work, uh, working with um, Society for Endocrinology and also uh, Addison's Disease Self-Help Group with Pumas Kempagoda has developed these amazing comics at two minutes each, which is fantastic for the attention span for all of us at the moment. What is Addison's? diagnosis and management and how to manage a crisis. And these are all free resources that now can reach out to thousands of people. Slide please. 
We talked a wee bit about Twitter and we do Twitter chat ups again for sharing information. Just to say on my pin tweet, I have the steroid emergency card that's got 92,000 hits. And again, I can't do that through clinic. We talk about diabetes insipidus, adrenal insufficiency, advertise the nurse line. And this is to anybody, it doesn't have to be a member can join in with these chats. And this has got a really wide reach. And so it's really all about sharing patient safety information. Next slide, please. And just to, and in a way of, uh, as some people have mentioned already, the NHS emergency card, which was introduced about a year ago in, in the middle of the pandemic, to, again, to keep people safe. And we developed this and it got launched slightly abruptly. But you can see here, again, it's got the emergency management. If someone goes to hospital with a crisis, 100 milligrams IM hydrocortisone and how to rapidly rehydrate. A QR code taking to this page on the Society for Endocrology website where we've got all the resources for management of adrenal insufficiency, what to do, some emergency information, longer term information. So any healthcare professional that's not an endocrinologist can access this. Um, and it shows how working between the healthcare professionals, the Society for Endocrinology and the support groups can really help share this information for when it's needed. Next slide, please. And then just two more slides, just quickly showing again, similar with Instagram, sharing information, but I'm sure you get the message about social media. Um, but the, we shared recently the advice for patients fasting during Ramadan with adrenal insufficiency. And then even further reach, the Addison's Disease Health Out Group took out a page in the recent Guardian, which is one of our national newspapers in the UK, which has paper and online. And it here they talked about adrenal insufficiency, and again, a bit about some symptoms, a bit about how patients feel, the steroid card. But again, the reach of this is across thousands that we wouldn't reach otherwise. So I think by thinking differently, uh, but, and also for me working with a patient support group, I'm really able to reach out to patients, give them all the information in different ways that different people might use and hopefully improve our patient safety. So I'm going to stop there and then I think we'd be happy to take any questions or discuss any of these points that people may have. Yeah, hopefully I'm back on. Uh, so thanks very much, Helen. Um, so uh, we'll just have a look to see if there's anything in the chat. It's mainly about people not being able to access the slides, but I'm amazed we've got nearly 270 uh, people watching us. So uh, if you're watching and you have questions, please put them in the Q&A and I'll be able to read them out. But uh, Helen, I know um, in uh, the end of February, early March last year, 2020, was a really busy time for all the patient support organisations. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you want to just elaborate or uh, tell us a bit about all the uh, work that was going on then, because it felt like I was, well, I was personally inundated with many, many patients asking me questions, but also being able to get some information out and refer people to the websites was really helpful. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I reflect I probably should have put the COVID stuff. So as you say, I mean, that slide with the ambulances, I think all of our lives didn't it change massively. And we wanted to keep people safe. And the other thing that happened was people noticed that they were going into crisis maybe a bit earlier. And this information came through the Addison's Disease Health Help Group. I think, Simon, you also had a patient that you, you, you heard about. But by patients being able to tell what was going on to the Addison's Disease Health Help Group, we heard really soon that the normal sick day rules wasn't sufficient. And so Simon, myself, Vivka R, Jeremy Thomason, um, Stephanie Baldwin, we put our heads together and we basically came up with some advice that we published quickly, both on the Society for Endocrinology website and the Addison's Disease who shared it with everybody. Body, and then it turned into a publication, but it isn't the publication actually that patients aren't going to read that. They're going to go to their trusted source of information, which is the support groups. So getting the information on there quickly meant that our patients knew a place to go to that was safe, that they're going to see what to do when they're sick. Because we're just remembering one in 200 patients will die from their crisis, and we just don't want that in the middle of a pandemic. So the other thing that we were able to do um, was share about the, the NHS card. And I know that's only NHS that won't help the rest of Europe. But again, it was a handheld resource that patients could have. And so we shared that it was available. We couldn't hand out the physical card. So again, Vic and the team did an amazing job with having pages that showed how to uh, download it, get it on your phone, and etc. So patients could quickly get it when they couldn't get to see their GP, they couldn't get to see the hospital, uh, you know, and that first wave everyone did shut down. And then lastly, I think that the other thing that we're getting lots of queries of now is around vaccines. Is it safe for people to have? What should they do with their steroids? And again, we're able to have information pretty quick on the website. And I think what really I find fantastic is that these four groups here work together. So if we work with the Addisons, for example, I know Simon and I do that, then they, they share with all the other groups with adrenal insufficiency. And so we know that there's trusted information getting out to our patients at a time that they may be really, really anxious. I don't know. 
if uh, Vic wants to uh, put herself on screen and just uh, tell us what happened with Brazil, because this was some amazing uh, international um, uh, in international events. Uh, because in the UK, I think we're quite lucky and we have these four um, organizations who are very active. But in other countries, uh, there's very little of this kind of advocacy going on. So I, I don't know if you want to, to unmute yourself, Vic, and tell us what happened with uh, the Brazilian uh, Addison's patient group. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Um, sort of at the height of COVID, we uh, got to a call together and just invited all the international groups we knew uh, just to see how everybody was, because there were so many unknowns at that point. We just didn't know how our community would be affected. And one of the um, ladies who came along was um, Adriana from the Brazil Addison's um, Association. And we all can obviously see from the news what's happening in Brazil in general, but to add to that, that they didn't generally in their healthcare system offer emergency kits or hydrocortisone in, in a lot of cases. So for us, it was hard to imagine what that must feel like in that situation with the pandemic and also not having what you need to self-manage um, so that you can um, you know, avert a crisis or even start to treat it yourself before take, getting emergency help. Um, so Adriana went from that position to within just a few months um, working with our medics. We, we just wanted to help. So we, we got all our medics together and all the charities together to write an open letter uh, to um, those who could influence the situation. Um, so I'm very grateful to all our medics for stepping in there and, and putting that letter together. And uh, the, the ultimate result was amazingly that um, the healthcare system now refers all new um, patients diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency to the Brazil Addison's Association to get a kit, to get support. Um, and even if things are difficult, there's people they can talk to, compare notes with, um, rather than feeling isolated and alone. It's a terrific achievement, I think. The Addison's Disease Self-Help Group, you know, we, we were working from 1984 to get to anywhere near that level so Adriana's achievement is just amazing and um, we featured it on our, our website on our blog as well so do take a look at that amazing story so we want to work with medics directly we want to work with learned societies because we just if, if we work together like we have it Covid has just brought everyone together and suddenly all these amazing results. Uh, I think it's fair to say in the UK now it's the standard of care if you if you've got adrenal insufficiency you should have uh, uh, a vial of hydrocortisone or preferably a few vials of hydrocortisone needle and syringe so you can inject yourself uh, but if there are uh, people uh, li working in countries living in countries where this isn't isn't standard of care for adrenal insufficiency uh, for us it feels like a no-brainer that that you should try to work with your uh, patient groups to implement this uh, th throughout the country so uh, I don't know of course we've this is a pan-european meeting so we've probably got people from at least 25 countries here um, if we exclude the UK temporarily. Uh, so um, if you want to get in contact with Vic or any of our um, support organisations for some advice about that, then I'm sure they'll be more than, help to, more than happy to do that. I think we might even have a live question. No, none. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> So is there, is there anything else, Helen, you want to say about the rollout of the steroid card? Because that, that did seem to take um, uh, quite a lot of time. You know, it, it wasn't a matter of just getting it out there. <laughs> That's a nice understatement. I think about five years. It might even be longer and it's still ongoing. So I think, you know, launching anything nationally, especially during a pandemic, is challenging. Uh, and... But I think what's been fantastic is that the work between the support groups, Society for Endocrinology and myself, the RCP and the NHS patient safety team, I think without those group of people working together, it would never have happened. And I think to we have to say the NHS patient safety team and RCP are really fundamental in, in getting this across. Um, it, it is difficult to initiate change nationally and you just have to keep plugging away at it. But I think the principle about having this card, I mean, OK, you could say it should be digital and we're working towards that. Um, but having something patients can have so they can self-advocate in an emergency when they're so really scared and, and ill uh, is really valuable. So, yeah, if you want to do one nationally, just stick with it. 
Okay, thank you. So we're officially out of time now. We've uh, had our 30 minutes. I just want to uh, thank all the speakers. Uh, I don't know if you all want to put yourself back on camera and wave goodbye, but uh, please do. This is about raising awareness, and uh, and please do contact um, our uh, patient support organisations because they'd be really delighted to work with you in whichever healthcare environment uh, you're working in and with your patients. So uh, thank you very much to all the panellists, and I hope you have a, a, a good day uh, on Sunday. So uh, goodbye and thank you.